welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon. Grab your coffee, grab your tea, and come along with me. We have a powerful program today. Some of you have really enjoyed the programs in the last year where we interviewed Daryl Strawberry. Well, today you get to meet his better half, his brighter half, his brilliant half, his beautiful half, and that is his amazing wife, Tracy. What a journey, what a Jesus girl, what a powerhouse. And today we're gonna be talking with her um, in our living room and, and hearing about the powerful truths from the word of God, because she is a Jesus girl. I mean, totally freedom girl, Jesus girl, on fire girl, no nonsense girl, um, my kind of girl. Uh, but her new book, The Courage to Heal. And you know, we see courage all over the word. Um, mostly, or when we first it, see it a lot, is in the book of Joshua where God was saying to Joshua uh, through Moses, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. Well, one definition of courage is strength in the face of pain or grief. Now, all of us have experienced pain in our life and grief, and how do we face it? What do we do with our pain and grief? Well, we can stuff it, we can compartmentalize it, we can ignore it, uh, we can defend it, or we can face it. And through her book and through the work of her life, she is going to empower us today with the courage to heal those broken, painful areas. How is she gonna do it? Through her own story and through the revelation that God has given her through curriculums, through her studies, uh, through her degrees, but mostly from Adversity University, just being on her face, a broken, surrendered vessel in need of a savior that can come in and fix. So let's go to Javen, and he's gonna be singing and worshiping to get us ready, and then we'll go straight to Tracy. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. It's 
It's amazing. It's so amazing. It's amazing. Grace. It's amazing. It's so amazing. It's amazing. Wasn't that a sweet, powerful segment? Listen, uh, God is amazing. What a day of healing. What a day of breakthrough. What a day of restoration that we've had. My guest today is precious. I've had the joy of knowing her since the early 2000s, and I have just watched God take her from someone that was just saved and on fire and, and getting freedom to, to someone that has become a leading voice in addiction, in healing, in recovery, in setting the captive free, in reconciliation. She is very multi-talented. She is a CEO. She is an entrepreneur. She is an author. She is an international speaker. She is a pastor. Uh, she comes alongside leaders and equips them and empowers them so that they can help others. And listen, she just said yes to Jesus. And he said, okay, we're going to run. So will you help me welcome the beautiful, the famous, the precious, the surrendered, saved, and on fire, Tracy Strawberry. Oh, Jen, thank you so much, my dear friend. Oh. Thanks for having me. Well, you have been busy writing and busy doing things, <laughs> and so I've been waiting and praying for this moment. Oh, it's my honor, and what an honor it is to share God's word together and encourage people and empower people. So thanks for having me today. You're such an encourager. Oh, you really are. You're, we all need encouragement, don't we? We do. We all need encouragement. We never outgrow the need for that. That's exactly right. That's when the weight of the enemy comes, we just encourage, empower people, and you can come out of any situation. You're right. Amen. Okay, before we start digging deep into some heavy stuff, I want to introduce you and some of your ministry in this clip. So let's go and take a look at Tracy in action. and how many self-discipline within me. When I got centered in Christ, I got strong. I began to heal. It says it's the Word of God that transforms the whole person. It restores the whole person. And when He is a miracle worker, He will take you out of anything, but you have to do your part. Keep your eyes on Christ, not the situation, not the circumstance. God has a great place for you. He has dreams for you. He will get God you through. God will change you. He will heal you. He will empower you. He will save you. He will sanctify you. Woo! Like, I want to take up an offering. I want to run to an altar. I want to sow seed. That was, oh, fire. I, I you... Listen, you are a teacher. Like you, I watch you, you start, you lay it out, you know, you, you teach, you ground, you share, you bring revelation. And then when the anointing hits you, you just, you light it up. <laughs> you light it up for Jesus. So. Well, that's what the Holy Spirit does, right? Yeah. And who would have thought with my past or where I came from that God is able to use any vessel who's willing to say yes to him. And when we entrust him with the journey, 
it's just amazing what he'll do in your life. And that's what he's done in my life, Jen. It's been a journey. It's been a journey, <laughs> to say the least. So where I come from, I came from loving parents who taught me about God, taught me about Jesus. And um, I had good seed being sown into my heart. Yeah. And as we know, a seed is designed to produce fruit. So when good seed goes in, good fruit is produced. There's power there, there's purpose there. But then there's also bad seed that comes in to choke out the good seed. Right. And that's what happened in my life. So at about age eight, I was molested by a neighbor that was across the way. So I had good seed and love coming in, but then there was a break. Yeah. And I want somebody to hear this because people don't just turn out bad or things just don't happen all of a sudden. Now, there are circumstances that happen suddenly. Yes. But for me, I was lost in addiction later on in life and addiction so severe and alcoholism so severe that I lost custody of my children. So now that I look back through God's eyes of grace and his power, I can see where the enemy started working very young at yeah. eight years old when that seed of molestation was implanted and imparted into my heart. There was a break there. So when you look back on your life and you see that God is good and he's good all the time, but the enemy is a bad enemy, John 10, 10. Yeah. The enemy, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I, the Lord Jesus, paraphrasing, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So the first lesson that I had to learn was that God is good. Yes. Those seeds of goodness are from God and those seeds of evil were from the evil one. Right. I, my natural tendency for a long time was to blame God right. for what the enemy had done or through a vessel because God works through people, the enemy works through yes, people. So I have this seed that just starts to be watered and implanted. I'm eight years old, I don't know what to do with this thing. So it starts to run out of control and I seek boys at a young age. I had my first drink at 10 years old and that just gave me a piece. It just came inside of my body, gave me a piece. Numbed you out. Numbed me out. And I thought, I wanna be her. I wanna be able to live as this person right here with this piece. That was the condition that I wanted. So that's the condition I sought. So that's the short story of where it began. God created us in his image and likeness. He created us with purpose. He created us with power. And then there's a derailment somewhere along the way. Right. There's a seed, there's a lie, there's an event. There's something that happens that gets the train off the track. So the first, the first thing that I recognized, again, was God is a good God. The enemy's a bad devil. So when I said, okay, all right, now I know the difference and running to Jesus instead of away from him, coming to Jesus, shaking my fist at him, angry, not understanding who he is when people are trying to lead me to Christ. I'm hearing testimony. God's always showing up. He will always show up yes. for you, won't he then? Yeah, you just sometimes you don't see it because mm -hmm. you're so wounded and yes. hurt. So wounded and hurt. And people are coming and telling me about Jesus People are coming and telling me, Tracy, you have problems with alcohol. Tracy, you're angry. Tracy, there's rage inside of you. You don't know me. You don't know where yeah. I come from. So that defensive move, yeah. that blaming move. Mm -hmm. For many years, I was the person that was like this, yes. blaming everybody, blaming God. And I would never look inward. I would never look on the inside of myself and evaluate and examine from a truthful place, a brutally honest place, didn't want to talk about the things that happened to me, didn't want to talk about the decisions I had made right. that led me into losing custody of my children. I didn't want to look at my life, that I was a woman that fell into promiscuity, even same-sex attraction for a little while, because it really wasn't attraction, it was just looking to love in a safe way. Safe. Right. I was gonna live the way I wanted, I was gonna love the way I wanted, and this is what I was gonna do. I had to come to that place where I finally came to the end of myself 
And I said, okay, God, I have to look this way instead of blaming that way. Yeah. I have to look inward and I have to start being honest about things that had happened to me and then the things that I had done and just lay it all down at the foot of the cross and at the feet of Jesus and say, okay, God, where are you going to start with this broken, shattered, bitter, angry woman and life of mine? I've destroyed everything. I've destroyed everyone. Can you work in a life like mine? And the answer is an overwhelming yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you don't think it is, which is why you ran from it for so long. Yes. Because the enemy does his job well, and he's he very persistent. And so he comes and tells guilt and shame and condemnation and blame, just like you said. Mm -hmm. And you don't know what to do with it. And, yes. and deception, then you don't see yourself for who you truly are. Mm -hmm. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. it gave you the courage yes. um, to start looking and start saying, okay, see this wreckage? What yes. are we going to do about it? See this wreckage? What are we going to do about it? Yes. So Tracy, let's fast forward. Yes. How long have you been clean and sober? 22 years. Yay, good Praise job. God. Amen. By God's grace. By God's grace. And I want to add something to that because by God's grace, and partnering with God. That's right. Because it's not some supernatural, God's grace is not some supernatural pie in the sky that yeah. you just sit around and wait for and yes. he's gonna do all the work. He does the mighty work. Yeah. But we have to partner with him and come to him, giving him full permission mm -hmm. in every area of our life to receive the grace that he has just holding in his yeah. hand, saying, my daughter, my son, I have forgiveness waiting for you. I have love waiting for you. I have a healing power waiting for you that human people cannot create, <laughs> that the human mindset cannot understand. I still have a purpose and a plan for your life. No matter how far down the scale you've gone, no matter how you feel, what you've done, how old you are. Yes, Tracy, I know you lost custody of your children. You are no surprise to me if you would just say yes to me and become my daughter, and let me start my mighty work in you. Yeah. I need your full permission because God is a gentleman. Yes. He will not barge in, he's not abusive, he doesn't make us love him. That's not love at all. Free will. Free will. He freely chooses us right where we are, he meets us right where we at, but we have to choose him and bring him in. Yeah, we have to respond we have to, to his respond. love and to his wooing to want to heal us. Yes. Okay, so let me ask you this. How old were the children when, when you lost custody? Sure. My oldest was 10 and my twins were 9. So they were young. Yeah, they that's hard. Young. It's very hard. And to not have access to them over a 10-year period of time on a consistent basis, that relationship is lost. And I felt like it was going to be lost forever. And when I had those precious moments and those opportunities, my children were afraid of me. Yeah. So it was very difficult to have this fun time. I had an expectation in my mind, oh, we're going to go to the zoo and we're going to make memories and we're going to make up for the time that's lost. Yeah. They're going to see this new woman that I am and it's going to be great and it's going to be wonderful. And that's not what happened. I was on my journey of restoration, but my children had not started that journey yeah. yet. So you have individuals who are in a different place. And this happens in marriages. This happens parent, children, child relationship, whatever the case may be, where people are in two different places trying to start up again, mm -hmm. heal again, trust again, move again, and we're not in the same place. So here's a place where you have, you have a choice. Are you gonna trust God and trust his process and lean into him instead of doing what I did for quite some time, God, I've given my life to you. I'm not using drugs anymore. I'm serving you. I'm helping other women. I am in your word and I love you so much. Why won't you bring this restoration yeah. with me and my children? Why God, why? It almost felt as if I was losing everything when I came to the Lord. Right. But what the Lord was really doing was restoring what I allowed 
the enemy to take away. Yeah. And there were a lot of things in my life that I didn't ask for. I call those afflictions. Yeah. You didn't sign up for it. You didn't ask for it. And God, where are you? But God was right there in that journey. And those are those hard times, and we have to trust Him. Well, I think what happens is we, we get a little bit of the word when we're in that Jesus bubble, we fall in love with Him. And then, like you said, we start projecting our expectations on him. Yes. And then we get disappointed. Yes. And, the, and, you know, this is the part in the journey that a lot of believers mm -hmm. walk away because they feel disappointed or hurt by God. Mm -hmm. um, they don't like the loneliness. They That's don't true. like the deep dive that happens mm -hmm. when you're getting healed because mm -hmm. healing is ugly. It is. Healing is painful. Yes, it is. Healing is, it, it's, it's, you just think God couldn't do this to me. Mm -hmm. But he loves us too much to leave us in that broken, pathetic condition. Yes. He's not going to leave us to be victims. He is not. He is not. And he's taking us on a journey to pull us out. Mm -hmm. So he's not doing the bad thing to us. Yeah. It's difficult because you said the key thing. As he's doing his mighty work, it's very painful. But when you think about healing, first of all, there's a supernatural work that God is doing when we partner with him and do it his way. Yes. Number one, we can't do it our way. Mm -mm. And number two, we have to get completely honest with him and trust him in the process. Healing requires persevering faith. Yeah. Persevering faith yeah. that no matter what it looks like today, if the answer did not appear as I wanted it to, yeah. if the pain is still present today, that Lord, you are with me and I'm going to trust you to give me what I need in that place. Healing also requires choices. If God tells you to let that person go, then you have to trust him to let that person go. If God is telling you to stay in a painful situation, then you have to trust that God's going to provide what you need in the midst of the stay. Right. But in the midst of the stay, doesn't mean that we have to stay a victim. No. That never wins a war anywhere. Never. That never produces victory. We are not a victim. And if I consistently keep or carry a victim mindset, I am now a volunteer to the enemy's yeah. plan. Can't have a victim mentality. I need to embrace and learn how to become fully alive yeah. in the midst of a dead situation become fully alive and keep my eyes on Christ and know that he has the purpose and the plan for me, but be intentional about seeking his plan, seeking his dream, because in the midst of a dead dream or a dormant dream, God will breathe life into you and he will show you exactly what he wants you to do. And Jen, when we're obedient to him, then that mighty work starts to happen and the breath of life becomes alive inside of us. Then you can find joy in the midst of the pain. Now you have strength in the midst of the pain. Yeah. Now you can care. Now you're experiencing that grace that you opened this portion of this talk with. Now I'm experiencing the grace because I'm partnering with him. I'm being obedient. I'm doing what he tells me to, even though it's painful, and I'm trusting him in the process. That's really good. That, that's so meaty. You know, one thing that you talk about so often in your book and just in your life, because you have authored many books and curriculums and, and you've, you've done so much um, in this healing journey. But one of the things that I love hearing you talk about is surrender, because surrender is just a simple word with just a hundred layers of complications, mm -hmm. all of which our flesh hates. Yes. And um, I know I wanted us to talk about many different things, but I, I do know that there's people watching and God is asking them to surrender. There's something they've got to let go of, that they've got to trust, they've got to forgive. So I just want you to talk about your definition of surrender, what God asked of you. And then I want to ask you to minister to those that may think they're surrendered or they don't know how to surrender, mm -hmm. but they really are tired of the pain, but they don't want to walk away from Jesus, but they are walking away from Jesus and they're just in turmoil. Yes. Surrender for me and in my life and my definition of that is that I have to relinquish my own way I have to get over myself. 
surrender means I can no longer participate in the things of the world. I have to let go of my sin. I have to let go of my sorrow. I have to let go of everything. And like we said, successes, successes can't base it on that. I have to let go of my expectation of how this is supposed to work out. <laughs> yeah. Because your prayers can become an idol. That was from that was my mistake for a very long time. If the expectation wasn't met, the answer wasn't just like this, then God, where are you? And I was missing his answers because I was so fixed on what I had in my mind. So I had to lay down the expectation and say, God, I'm right here. Yeah. But you lay down what's not God's, but then you have to pick up what is God's. I have to abandon self and pick up all of the nature of God that he is. I have to lay down the anger, which means I have to pick up the word of God and pursue peace. Mm -hmm. So surrender is an exchange. It's not this deflated place of the, where I'm waving the wand and saying, yeah. okay, it's over. That's when it begins. Yeah. Like, God, you are so good. Amen. And the surrender is, it's never easy. I want people to hear that. The journey of healing and coming out strong, it's not easy. That's why you need persevering faith. Yeah. But God will give you what you need in those times where you feel like you're going to be crushed and you can't do it any longer. You have to trust him. You do. Pray for someone that's listening right now, leaning in. Yes. I just want you to open your ears and take a deep breath and know that the Lord cares about your situation. I would ask you, if you will, just to lay the situation down at the feet of Jesus and begin to open your heart to trusting him. God, no matter what, I know that you're gonna be with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, the name above all names, the name that carries all power and purpose, I pray for each and every person that's listening, that has the ears to hear right now. Father, you care about their situation. Your word says in Psalm 147, three, that you will heal the brokenhearted. You will bind up their wound. I ask you to reveal your dream, your purpose, to breathe the breath of life in them for you care for them. And Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor and all the praise because you are faithful in all things. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. We're going to have Tracy back because that went by way too fast. But I encourage you to go to tracystrawberry.com, get courage, the courage to heal. Uh, I thank you. Thank you for being here, Tracy. Thank you for watching CTN. Thank you for supporting this program and this network. Continue to pray, continue to give, continue to sow, continue to go on social media and support us. We appreciate you and we'll see you tomorrow on Come Home.